We humans have learned a lot about our bodies. We can measure things like our eyesight, our blood pressure, or our heartbeat. But the one part that still mostly eludes us is the tool we use to figure all this out, our own cognition. Of course, we've tried to understand cognition. There are IQ and EQ tests, interviews, and questionnaires. But all these methods are rather primitive and subjective. Current intelligent tests are not that different from simply eyeballing someone's biceps or asking them to lift a few barbells to measure their strength. But in the age of information work, it is our mental abilities that determine our possibilities. This is our current dilemma. Without understanding cognition, we don't really understand who we are and can't make best use of our potential. So what exactly is cognition? And why is it so hard to measure? Cognition refers to all the mental processes involved in gaining knowledge and comprehension. This includes thinking, remembering, judging, and problem solving. These are all higher level executive functions of the brain that involve language, imagination, perception, and planning. In short, these are all the things that make us who we are. So while this much is clear, there's still so much we don't understand. We won't be able to truly measure or quantify cognition until we understand many of its underlying mechanisms. Some progress has been made with devices like the electroencephalogram, or EEG, which allows us to measure electrical activity in the brain. Or there's also functional magnetic resonance imaging, or fMRI, which enables us to also map brain activity. The problem here is that these devices exist in the lab setting and are very expensive. So they're only used in response to showing worrisome symptoms. Because the data is so hard to get, it only covers a very specific niche. Until we have insights from a broad cross-section of the population in everyday settings, we will keep stumbling in the dark. But current and rising technologies promise a light at the end of the tunnel. The omnipresence of smartphones and wearables such as watches and even smart glasses are already providing us with a wealth of data. And beyond the basics like skin temperature, sleep and heart rate, these accessible devices could soon also be used to measure facial expressions, reaction speed, eye movement and many more metrics from the vast population that already uses them. Data from real life, not only that collected in a lab, we know that sleep, diet, social interactions, meditation, and much more impact one's cognition. So this will get us valuable glimpses into our brains in a wide variety of circumstances. While all of this data is great, it is the emergence of next generation AI that will allow us to really put cognitive abilities into context. With the help of machine learning and neural networks, scientists can start to draw a map of the many behavioral markers that play a role in cognition. This way, we can break cognition down into its various components and examine it on an elemental level. Right now, there are a myriad of different approaches and definitions out there. Even though there's a consensus on the importance of aspects like attention and memory that we've been able to test reliably for quite some time, new indicators are now seen as essential. Creativity, for example. How we will define and measure this aspect will become a fascinating challenge in itself. Once we've identified the elements within cognition, we can build a periodic table of sorts, a breakthrough to mark the true understanding of cognition. Armed with these new insights, we'll unlock many exciting possibilities. We will be able to define a baseline for cognition and learn how it might be affected by old age. Instead of spotting neurodegenerative diseases only once they've taken a toll, we will be able to anticipate, prevent, and cure them in the future we will get the chance to augment and optimize cognitive processes. But most importantly, we will learn to understand ourselves better. After all, cognition is what lets us experience our environment and the vast cosmos we inhabit. Now's the time for us to access another universe to explore. The one we find looking inwards.